Salt crusted sea bream served with braised leeks and hazelnuts. First job is that salt crust. This dish looks intimidating, but it is actually very straightforward and very easy. Make sure the guts are out and the fish is clean. The most important thing is always leaving the skin and the scales on. That skin protects the actual flesh from becoming salty. Give the fish a really nice seasoning inside. Even though we're putting a salt crust on the outside, it's still very important to season the middle. Fennel seeds goes brilliantly well with fish. And then slice the lemon. Nice, large, thick slices. The zest and the lemon bakes inside the fish. Fold over the fish and just squeeze the juice. Now, for the salt, about 150 ml to 200 ml of water. What you're trying to do now is just bring the salt together. And you want to sort of end up with a bowl of salt that looks almost like snow. You'll need about two kilos of salt for this, and it doesn't need to be the fancy stuff. Even though you're using a lot of it, it won't make the fish salty. Instead, the crust forms a kiln that retains moisture. Now, basically, a nice bed of salt underneath. Flatten it down. Lay the fish on top of the salt. Get your salt and just start packing. You can salt crust almost any fish, from sea bass to salmon or flatfish like sole, but it's not great with oily fish. Now, it looks like a ridiculous amount of salt, but it's really important to cover all the fish because you want that nice shell. And the minute salt hits the oven, it sort of tightens up and forms this large crust. That goes in at 180 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes. Whilst the fish cooks, it's onto my beautiful braised leeks. Splash of olive oil. Leek is a very sort of firm, robust vegetable, so it can take a really nice sear. The most exciting thing about these leeks, A, they go beautifully with the sea bream, but braised leeks, coloured properly with a lot of flavour on there, taste absolutely delicious. Take a couple of cloves of garlic and just crush them in with the leeks. Some fresh thyme. Get some butter in there. Braising them in butter and white wine gives them the most amazing flavour. Braising is a chefy term for searing at a high temperature, then cooking with a bit of liquid. Bring that up to the boil. And then the rest of your butter. Now, as the white wine reduces down, the flavor of the leeks intensify and they glaze. Turn it down. Just leave that little gap there. If we totally covered it, then you're going to get all that condensation from underneath the lid. And it will just make the leeks watery. The leeks will take about 12 minutes to cook. So now for the garnish. Roasted hazelnuts. They'll be roasted in the oven. Very brittle, very firm. So get them inside. Pestle and mortar, put a seasoning, and just crush your nuts. Don't overpound them. I just want those nice, sort of rustic, chopped, toasted hazelnuts. Now, get your knife. You want that going through with ease. And turn off the gas. I absolutely adore them. Like stunning little parcels. Soft and slightly creamy. Now, baste the leeks with the remaining butter. Spread your flat leaf parsley over generously. And then just sprinkle the toasted hazelnuts. The combination of that earthiness from the leeks, the roasted flavor from the hazelnuts, that is a stunning way of eating leeks. And now for the fish. And look, now you just gently tap the top and it starts falling away. You can just see that beautiful shine. Carefully lift off your salt. Now, peel that skin. Look how juicy and succulent that sea bream is. Stays incredibly moist. The other great thing about cooking whole fish like this, it makes it so easy to fill it. Take your spoon, run that down through the top, and the fish will just slide off there. Now, just push back that lovely fillet and look, that is cooked beautifully. And that's what keeps them coming back for more and more and more. When you have friends over, you want to keep lunch relaxed, laid back but impressive. And a salt crust bream with beautiful braised leeks is just that. 
all over Southeast Asia, you find people cooking and eating the huge bowls of delicious noodle soups. It's a very simple dish, but the variations you get are extraordinary. Different meats, different fish, and even different dumplings. But what I love most about noodle soup is the fact that it's a complete meal, carbs, protein, and vegetables in one big bowl of happiness. For my ultimate Southeast Asian lunch, I'm showing you one of my favorites. Spicy clam and noodle soup, followed by sweet Moorish banana and coconut fritters for dessert. First up, my dessert, banana fritters. Take your bananas, and to get them really nice and soft, just rub the banana. Sip together flour and baking powder. Sugar into the flour. Then add coconut for texture and a pinch of salt. Sounds strange in the dessert, but it works brilliantly, especially with the fritters. It makes the batter nice and crisp. Start crushing. And use the back of the fork and just push it against the side of the bowl. And then, once you've mixed that through, I'm going to make that mix now slightly fragrant with some lime zest. Now, the lime just really elevates the sort of richness and the denseness of the banana. Cover it with cling film so it doesn't get a skin on top. Sit that in the fridge for 15 minutes. As the banana fritter mixture rests, I'm getting on with my broth for the noodle and clam soup. Fish stock is the base. Bring that up to the boil. Now, to take that broth to another level. In with chopped shallots, fresh ginger, and a whole chili, seeds and all. I actually quite like it. Spicy. Just chop once and into the broth. Bring it up to the boil and let it simmer. Galinga is a sort of almost like a softer version of ginger, slightly milder. You can use galangal paste, but I prefer the fresh stuff. The stems for coriander. We'll finish the broth with the heads. And that's what endeared me to the Southeast Asian style of cooking. Across my travels there was there's no waste in lime leaves. For me, one of my favorites. Incredibly pungent, strong, full of flavor, very acidic, but gives a really nice aroma to the broth. Just tear them in. Now, the lemongrass. So the secret here, that's where all the flavor is, right at the very end. So you take the back of the knife and you just bash the lemongrass. So all that flavor is gonna run out in seconds. That's the base of the broth done. And the longer you leave it, the more intense it gets. Whilst the broth infuses, soak your rice noodles in boiling water for 10 minutes. Just enough time to fry your fritters. And the batter now is ready. Use a metal spoon to drop the batter to the bottom of the pan. The minute they hit that oil, they puff up. That's why it's important to put your spoon into the oil so the mixture runs off. It creates this lovely little fritter. And then gently fry. Get a slotted spoon and nicely carefully turn them over. The smell of that lime is extraordinary. Fry for two to three minutes. As they start floating, it signifies the fact that they're cooked off with a gas and just let them drain. Look at those beauties. Lovely. Sprinkling when they're hot with the sugar actually sticks to them. They're done, ready to go. The last job before serving, the clams. Never be scared of cooking shellfish. The most important rule is if they are slightly opened, a millimetre, discard it. Make sure mussels, clams, are always tight. Cook the clams for just three to five minutes or until they're all open. Bring that up to the boil, and this is where we finish the broth. Touch of fish sauce, a little sprinkle of sugar. Drain your noodles into the bowl. For added texture, some delicious bean sprouts. Get your lime, fresh squeeze of lime juice in. Beautiful. Literally, as the stock comes up to the boil, the clams open automatically. So they cook beautifully. The flavor from inside the clam 
has enhanced the broth. The smell is incredible. The clams cooked, finished with fresh coriander, and serve. There you have a perfect lunch. A delicious, spicy clam noodle with an amazing banana fritter. My spicy clam noodle soup and banana and coconut fritters made in minutes and proof. You only need to travel as far as your kitchen to get the taste of Southeast Asia. Succulent, zingy prawn tostadas. And for dessert, salty caramel popcorn, so good you'll want to eat it by the handful. You can't beat properly home-cooked popcorn. Start off with just a touch of oil in there as it lightly starts to smoke. Corn in. So now, get your lid. Never leave it far away from you. Sounds like it's raining. It's not. So it's popcorn canals trying to pop out. Boom. Mm, delicious. Just a little shake of the pan. Get it going. And then lift that lid at your peril. We See? It's a very exciting pan in there. And when all that little pitter-patter stops, you know your popcorn is cooked. Nice. You could eat it fresh from the pan, but I've got another plan. I'm going to make a salted caramel popcorn. Start off with your sugar into the hot pan. Never stir a caramel, otherwise it crystallises. It's a salted caramel, so a nice pinch of salt in there as well. Now, once you've got it to a really nice, dark caramel flavour, stir in your butter very carefully. Caramel's very, very hot. Half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda kickstarts the reaction that gives the caramel a honeycomb flavour. Mix that in. And you'll see it reacting almost like a large crunchy in the bottom of your bowl. Now the gas is off, and that caramel is a nice, dark, rich flavour. Now pour in the popcorn to coat it with that incredible caramel. Give that a good mix. It's that easy, and it's going to taste amazing. Lay that nice and flat. Once that cools down, it becomes nice and brittle. But you've got that nice salted caramel flavour, which just takes popcorn to a completely dim level. Whilst the popcorn cools down, it's onto my prawn tostada. Wonderful prawns. I'm going to marinate them first with a little bit of garlic. Nice and fine. And don't worry if you can't slice thinly. Just Get a little grater and grate the garlic nice and fine as well. Nice pinch of chilli flakes over your prawn. Garlic in, salt, pepper, and olive oil. Give that a really nice little mix. Whilst the prawns marinade, I'm going to knock up a salad. This is a really nice sort of light, fragrant salad. Radishes, topped and tailed, and then into quarters. Cherry tomatoes, halved. Spring onions, sliced and seasoned. And then, just to liven things up, a little bit of chilli in there. And slice them on an angle. Now, the avocado cut in half. Give that a little twist. So you just go down and down and down, carefully with your knife. Turn it round. Go down and down and down. And then you take your spoon and you've got your diced avocado coming out already. Now, baby gem lettuce. Half, then shred. Freshly squeezed lime juice and a little drizzle of olive oil. Tostada is a classic Mexican-style open tortilla, so that lime complements it beautifully. Lastly, roughly chopped coriander and give it a mix. That is the perfect base for a tostada. The salad's ready. Now for the prawns, and don't be afraid of getting the pan nice and hot. Teaspoon of olive oil in. Anything less than that sizzle, when you put that first prawn in there, don't put them in. Keep them nice and flat. Make sure you've got all that marinade in there as well. Watch them change colour rapidly. I'd rather cook them quicker in a hotter pan than slower in a colder pan. The difference in taste is night and day. The prawns will take just two minutes to cook through. Lime juice just over the top. 
Nice. Toss them over the line. These are corn tortilla. Quite robust, and it's the kind of base that doesn't disintegrate. Hot pan in. It's a dry pan, so that corn tortilla goes nice and crispy on the outside. Look, crispy shell. To build them, generous with the salad. That base will stay nice and crisp. Next, with your prawns. I like to keep the tails in to the center and lay the round part of the prawn on the outside. And there we have a delicious, yet very humble prawn tostada, followed by my superb salty caramel popcorn. Beautiful. Prawn tostadas and salty caramel popcorn. Vibrant, irresistible smelling dishes you'll want to dive into. Thank <laughs> you.